Hey folks, how you doing? Papa Joe here. You know, I had a message for you Sunday. And the old devil jumped in there and created issues where I couldn't deliver it to you. I'm sorry. But I do want to come back today and touch on that message with you. So if y'all would, please join me in an opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. Lord, we thank you for putting this word on my heart. Lord, I ask that you put the words on my lips. Lord, use my mouth as your mouthpiece. Help me to get this message across to folks that, that you're wanting to get across, Lord. Give them the wisdom to, to hear your word, Lord. Hear your message and to accept your message, Lord. Give each and every one of us the courage to live out the messages that you uh, uh, you put on us, Lord. These things we ask in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And all God's people said, You know, folks, during these times that we're living through right now, with all the riots and, and all the chaos in the streets and and all the political unrest and civil unrest and, and everything that's going on for the last year or more, uh, well, actually, it's been closer to the last nine years, and you know who got voted in way back when, don't we? Uh, I've had people literally ask me, you know, Papa Joe, is this the end times? Is, is this what the Bible's preaching about? Well, I've told you numerous times that uh, the Bible tells us that we will not know it that we will be seeing the times approach and we won't even know what we're seeing. So should this be the end times, we won't know it. The thing that concerns me is so many people are trying to wait until the last minute to get right with the Lord. Folks, you can't do that. My son, uh, Nathan, the one I lost, is proof that you never know when you're going to go. You don't know when the good Lord is going to call you home. Now, he was 23 years old, 24, and the good Lord took him that quick. And it happens all the time, at all ages and for all different reasons. And the whole thing is, folks, is you're supposed to be right with the Lord because you want to be right with the Lord, because you love the Lord, and you want to obey the Lord, you want to walk with the Lord, and you want to end up being with the Lord. You don't want to do it as a fire insurance policy. Don't wait to get right with God until you think you're fixing to die. That really ain't a smart move in my book. We take fire insurance in case there's a fire. We take car insurance in case there's an accident. We take home insurance in case something happens to our home. You need to take out death insurance with the Father. Because we're everywhere else, you don't know when or if there will be a fire or when or if your house will be damaged. You know for a fact you're going to die. Only thing guaranteed in life is death. When you're born, you have one goal to live till you die and you don't know how long that trip's going to be so don't try to wait till the last minute and then sign the policy this ain't hurricane insurance out on the coast where you're watching the news and you're trying to watch the weather and trying to figure out if that hurricane's going to hit you or not before you sign off on your insurance and pay you already know you will die each and every one of us, we will die. You need to have your right, life right with Him. You need to be walking with Him. Don't wait and question what's happening in the world. The world belongs to the devil. The world's going to hell in a handbasket until the good Lord comes back. When Jesus comes back, He's going to whoop the devil. He's going to take over the world again. And heaven on earth will happen again. But you cannot just sit around and wait and hope that you see it coming. And right before that bullet hits you, you say, Lord, save me. You need to be saying it now. 
You need to be getting with him now. You need to be talking to him now. You need to be sacrificing your life to him. He sacrificed his life for us. You need to do the same. He died publicly for us. You need to live publicly for him. Stop and think about it a little bit. Don't just keep waiting and hoping and maybe you know what's going to happen. You're going to live until your last breath and you'll never see it coming. Well, chances are you won't. And then what are you going to do? Me? I'm signing on with him. I'm signing his his insurance policy. That's the only true one. Y'all remember, the good Lord loves you and so do I. Join me in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, we thank you for giving us the instructions, Lord. We thank you for, for just doing and joining us in this fellowship. Lord, I ask that you help each and every person that's watching this to, to come to you, Lord, to to bow their head and bend their knee, Lord, and, and tell, tell you that they want to walk with you. They want to be one of yours, be in your flock, Lord. Help each and every one of us, Lord, to, to just walk with you, to, to tell you that we want to be yours. Help us, Lord. Each and every one of us needs your help. Reach down and take our hand, Lord, and help us to walk with you. Lord, you're a wonderful God, and we thank you for sending your Son. We don't understand the pain you put yourself through for him to be sacrificed for us, but Lord, we surely thank you for it. It was an awesome deal that you did. Lord, help us. Help each and every one of us, and help our president. Lord, I ask especially that you'll touch some of these elected idiots that we have in D.C., Lord, and and help them to come around to you. Help them to do what's right by our nation and to bring you back into our nation and our schools and into our lives. Lord, you're an awesome God and we love you for it. These things we pray in the precious name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And all God's people said, Y'all remember, the good Lord loves you and so do I. Y'all think about this a little bit. Good day now.